This is News Alert on Capital TV. The consumption levels of rice among Ghanaians have seen unprecedented increase over the past decade. Information gathered from Indes Mundi, a research organization that provides data for all countries in the world, indicates that from the 60s through to the 90s, rural and urban dwellers in Ghana were seen to be consumers of traditional crops such as cassava, cocoyam, and yam, among others. Nonetheless, a significant proportion of these consumers have switched from the consumption of other staples to rice. According to the Ministry of Food and Agriculture Facts and Findings 2009-2010 report, urban markets represent about 76% of total rice consumption. Consumption of rice in Ghana increased from 17.5 kg in 1999 and 2001 to 22.6 kg per annum in 2002 and 2004. In 2011, consumption increased to 38 kg per annum with a projection of 63 kg by 2015. According to the International Rice Research Institute, the increase in demand among urban consumers for high-priced fragrant rice is as a result of poor post-harvest handling in domestic production. A visit to the Makola market in Accra revealed that foreign brands such as Royal Aroma, Gold Fair's Choice, Adam's Rice and Royal Fiesta, among others, are the most popular brands on the market. At times they, 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 they come with Sultana, Gino, Royal Feast, Royal Roma, and the types. The repair is coming from uh, Viet, that's Vietnam. We also have some coming from Thai, which is Thailand. But apart from the repair, we also have the golden pot. They are all new types. But it's the best rice I can recommend because they have perfume. And as customers used to, they know the rice to be jasmine rice. And these rice are also jasmine. It depends, you know, the customers, what the customers need is what we provide. For my customers, they used to buy the perfume rice more than the local rice. So as a business, you know, as a businessman, if you buy the more of the local rice and customers are not patronizing, I mean, you, you end up losing. When Capital TV inquired from a cross-section of Ghanaians on factors they consider when purchasing rice, this is what they had to say. Before I buy, I do check out the quality. Okay, what they have to offer, you know, and uh, let me just put it like, I have good taste for good meals. Well, I go for, usually I prefer the local rice though, but if I go out like this, you know, I don't mind eating Uncle Charles, Uncle Sam or whatever, and then the uh, US five star kind of brown, yeah. I normally go to joints, I believe they use, not perfume, but rice that is good. Normally I use Gino, Sultana, and one other. Recently, I tried a local one, but there wasn't any name on it, so I don't know the name of the local rice. The taste was fine, but it took a longer time to get it soft. When I go to the market, I, I do ask which one really sells, and they tell me Bella Rice, so I do take in Bella Rice off it almost each and every day. The Statistical Research and Information Directorate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture has revealed that although rice is grown in all 10 regions of Ghana, the northern, upper east and Volta regions contribute 80% of total national output. Emmanuel Lashi, a physically challenged man who has looked beyond his disability to help others, is the founder of Christ the King of Kings School. The school, situated behind the Jamestown Lighthouse, caters for the educational needs of the deprived children in that community. Many times, disabled persons are only seen begging for alms by the roadside. Hardly would you see such a selfless act from one so deprived. Imanwalashi, in spite of his challenge, decided to contribute his quota to his society by helping these children become responsible members of the society. When I came, I saw the children here walking up and down, doing nothing. If you ask them, why you don't go to say, my, my, my mother don't have money to send me to school. So I say, who? Oh, if, if that is the case, I will contact the... So I have a feeling how the children are walking about without school, 
I have a feeling that if I establish a school here for them, it will, it will help them so that in future they also become a good citizen in the country. Parents are charged two Ghana cities a day for enrolling their children in the school. Out of the said amount, wards are fed, salaries of teachers and auxiliary workers are paid, as well as utility bills and other costs incurred. His actions serve as an inspiration to other fiscally challenged individuals who may consider themselves unworthy or useless to the society. I have um, a wife and four children. And my wife too, in fact, uh, she has tried because not all of women who accept disabled to mar marry them. Some parents who have the awards enrolled in this school express their gratitude towards the actions of Emmanuel. My name is Rebecca Kumi and I haven't regretted since. The results are perfect. I have the children enrolled in this school. My children have excelled in school. School now be an abuama for them. Who is very beneficial to the children? Be the poor can afford to educate the children there. Money is a problem. Jamestown, a suburb of Accra, is a strong gang community with fishing and boxing being their main occupation. The people are also well known for their excellence in the creative arts industry, such as Ni Obrimpon Kwejo Abebiu, the chief of Jamestown, and Honorable Ni Lante Van Dapoy, the deputy minister of local government and rural development, all hail from this community. Work is steadily progressing on the 14-kilometer road construction project in Noyem within the Kweu West municipality in the eastern region, just a few days after the commencement of the project. A follow-up to see how far the contractor has gone with the work revealed that just within the first week of the commencement, the road was already beginning to take shape. The previously untarred, potholed, and dusty road had already been thoroughly plowed, making plying easier for users. Engineer for CLG in Ghana, Eda Makakbo, explained how far they have gone with the project and some of the challenges they are encountering. We are now peeling off the bitumen, the old bitumen, so we can just fix another one. That's what we do now. We just started some hours ago. As you can see, the doors are busily working here. Yeah. Sure. The challenge so far, I would say, it's the rain. As you can see, for here, it rains every day. I mean, once it rains, you can't continue with what you do. You have to wait till it rains before you can just continue. So that's the only challenge we have in here. We make sure when we have a clear weather, we work faster so we can catch up time. This reporter also noticed that some indigents, out of excitement, were already planning to start some commercial activities at the edge of the road. They recalled some of the challenges they experienced prior to the commencement of the road. <laughs> I am a regular user of this road. Indeed, the road is in a deplorable state. But now we can see it's been constructed. On this note, we thank the government, MP, and regional minister for their good initiative. And regional minister, we are very delighted that the road is being constructed. It has been our prayer that the road will be constructed very soon. Due to the bad nature of the road, it makes it very difficult transporting ourselves to the next town due to the excessive transport fares. The bad nature of the road had diverse effects on our cars. The spare parts for the cars are also expensive and not durable. We end up spending all our profits on maintenance, so we are pleading with the government to complete the project. It would be recorded that the three-month contract was awarded by the Kofaudia Highways Regional Office to CLG Ghana Limited after a keen competitive bidding. 
CLG Ghana Limited is a member of the Capital Line Investment Group. That was News Alert on Capital TV.